open your ears. For which of you will stop the vent of hearing when loud rumor speaks? I, from the Orient to the drooping West, making the wind my post horse, still unfold the acts commenced on this ball of earth. Upon my tongue's continual slanders ride, the which in every language I pronounce, stuffing the ears of men with false reports. I speak of peace, while covert enmity under the smile of safety wounds the world. And who but rumor, who but only I make fearful musters and prepared defense, whilst the big year, swollen with some other grief, is thought with child by the stern tyrant war, and no such matter. Rumor is a pipe blown by surmises, jealousies, conjectures, and of so easy and so plain a stop that the blunt monster with uncounted heads, the still discordant, wavering multitude, can play upon it. But what need I thus my well-known body to anatomize among my household? Why is rumor here? I run before King Harry's victory, who in a bloody field by Shrewsbury hath beaten down young Hotspur and his troops, quenching the flame of bold rebellion, even with the rebel's blood. But what mean I to speak so true at first? My office is to noise abroad that Harry Monmouth fell under the wrath of noble Hotspur's sword, and that the king, before the Douglas rage, stooped his anointed head as low as death. This have I rumored through the peasant towns between that royal field of Shrewsbury and this worm-eaten hold of ragged stone where Hotspur's father, old Northumberland, lies crafty sick. The posts come tiring on, and not a man of them brings other news than they have learned of me. From rumors' tongues they bring smooth comforts false, worse than true wrongs.